Hey guys, gals, and MBs, I'm here today with Innovation Peak. Innovation Peak being one of my favorite synths, especially as a hybrid synths go. And we're going to be making a pad, an ambient pad, that's going to be heavily inspired by the PPG Wave, which is one of my favorite synths from uh, the olden days. I mean, it's from the 80s, but where's it from the late 70s? I think it's, it's from the 80s. Um, that said... We're uh, going to uh, use the peak, obviously, but we're going to use uh, some of the wavetable functionality and we're going to use some of the VA functionality. So l let's just get started with it and see what we can do. So I'm going to use an initialized patch. I already had the patch set up. I've spent a week on it. The nice thing about that, it's already in the slot, which means that, or the memory location, but that means that we can see how I set it up and I'll have the values here without them all written down. I have some of the settings written down here, but it makes it easier for me to show you how I made this patch. So yeah, now we're initialized, and by default, we get a sawtooth. Uh, first disclaimer, please listen to this on stereo headphones or studio monitors with a decent range. So good stereo headphones or studio monitors with a lot of low end extension or something like that, because you'll get the full uh, harmonic capabilities of this patch and the synth actually so yeah um the first thing you really have to note and uh, it is that you can easily overdrive the effects section on this a lot of these synth um, modules are analog and you can just overdrive the hell out of them which is where it gets a lot of the character but we don't want to do that in this patch so i'm going to always keep the oscillators below or at like about half so yeah as you can see here the saved value i had is 138 but you know it's the right there. 127 would be half. Yeah, I think we go up to 255, yeah, so like one somewhere around that. All right, so the first oscillator we're going to use is a wavetable, and that's uh, why this is PPG inspired. And we're going to use winds, so let's go ahead and find winds. And the one thing is, you can set the offset. So, what I mean by that is the modulation source kind of starts at where you set where the wavetable is. So we can manually scan it. So if I start at negative 64, the LFO is going to start at negative 64. And we want to turn the LFO to around 20. And we want to make sure that the speed is quite on the lower side. So. It's not sounding like much yet because we haven't brought in some of the filtering and the effects, but just bear with me and we'll have a very nice sounding patch. So now we're going to use the second oscillator. We're going to go to more. We're going to use a wavetable again. We're going to put it about half. Again, not to overdrive the digital effects section. And we want to use a uh, string. I would say it would, should be called strings, but you know, whatever. So string. And we want to set the, um, we don't need to set anything on the manual. It'll be at zero. But we're going to use negative um, modulation. Not negative, but it's going to go down in the wavetable. So we'll turn around negative 48 there. Without, and then with. And uh, one thing that I really like of uh, with the Prophet 6 um, is the fact that your sub oscillator is a triangle wave. And the nice thing is this is a three oscillator synth, so we can emulate that. So we're going to do, that's one of my favorite things in a, a um, analog subtractive synth is that triangle sub oscillator. It's just so much different than, even though I like the OB6 is a better synth uh, for me in opinion, my opinion, sorry, and like the take five and stuff like that is, I love that triangle thing, the uh, sub oscillator. So we're going to use the third oscillator as a sub oscillator. So let's go ahead and turn up the volume, not too much. We're gonna keep it under half and we're gonna turn the range down to 16. We're gonna change it over to triangle. So it's gonna sound like this. Without and with. We're going to add some punchiness and bass to this patch. All right. And now we want to set the filter to around here because we're going to use, so we're going to set the filter to around 50, 51, somewhere around there. 
because we're going to use the envelope. But we're also going to use a 12 dB per octave filter. Now we want to set the envelope depth to around here, so around 30 um, to 30 or 40, somewhere around there. It, it's fine. And now by default, envelope one or mod envelope one becomes our filter envelope. And we also want to add some release here. So the amp envelope needs to be released pretty high. And then we want a little bit of attack so we don't get any clickiness on the amp envelope. And now we need to shape the mod envelope. So let's go ahead and set the release to about 100 or just very high, so about 100. And we want to add the sustain envelope to, or the sustain portion of the envelope in the 80s, so right around there. And then we want to have a little bit of decay, so the decay cycle will kick in. It'll go slowly up, it'll hit the decay, then it'll go down to a sustain, and then it'll release. We want it to be nice and smooth, and we want to have the attack fairly high up, so it'll sound like this. sounding really lovely, isn't it? Okay, now we want to actually add some resonance. The resonance on this isn't the f my most my most favoritist. No, it's not my favorite resonance. My favorite resonance um, on a filter is definitely the SEM filter, so the OB6 filter, and soon to be the TO5, which I did pre-order a TO5, and I'm going to be super excited. If it's anything like the Take 5, it'll probably be my synth of the year. It, it's, it's just so easy because it has the OB style, um, the uh, Oberheim style sound in a take five package with that amazing mod matrix. So yeah, we want some resonance, obviously. I think that sounds really cool. But what's really gonna set it apart, I mean, yeah, we have some lovely moving envelope there, right? But once we add the awesome effects that are built into the Peak, the Peak has the, I, I always say it, it has the best effects section of a synth period, the, especially the reverb. The reverb is just lovely, but that's what's really gonna set this up. Um, the other thing that I want to add is some voice spread. So go into the voice menu. You need to go over here. I like to use alternate. Um, diverge sounds okay. It's a little weird, but I'm going to turn the spread up into like, I don't know, 50 or so. Let's hear that. This is where I hope you're listening to this on stereo headphones or something with a good stereo spread, but you should hear a nice stereo spread. You can hear with our uh, envelope there for the filter how it just goes up. It just peaks. It gets really harsh and then it melts out. That's going to give something for the uh, reverb to bite down on and just give you an extremely beautiful sound. I mean, with no reverb right now and just some pan spread, you can hear how just lovely that sounds. So yeah, let's go straight to the effects section. So one of the weird things with this synth is the effects, in the normal mode, it's kind of like an effect send, but you send them individually to each effect. Now, if you use a, um, yeah, so we can just go there. So what we'll do is we'll go to the effects section. We'll go to the very first one. So by default, it's parallel routed. So each of the effects gets a uh, like a signal, the unadulterated signal or the clean signal or the dry signal is sent to each of the effects individually. None of the effects um, like cascade into another effect. You're not affecting an effect with an effect. <laughs> That's the easiest way to put it. We want to. We actually want the chorus to go into the delay into the reverb. That's the way I normally do it. Um, you can do it in this patch. It's going to be part of it. 
But so what you do is you go down to the routing on the first page of the effects section, and you want to choose delay into chorus, or sorry, you want to go chorus into delay into reverb, so CDR. It's kind of where the Zoom CDR gets its name. It's chorus, delay, and reverb. But yeah. So here's the thing. It has this really weird like um, zippering effect, kind of like aliasing if you have its the dry level and the wet level set at the same. So I turn off the dry completely. That doesn't mean that it's gonna be fully wet on the effects. That just means that if you turn the reverb all the way up, you will get a fully wet effect. The caveat to that is you can't use the bypass switch because now what the bypass switch is gonna do is it's going to cut everything. So you'll hear. See, but now if we set the reverb, so reverb is completely off. You don't, the effect isn't fully wet, but if you go here, you get 50, 50 and it sounds nice. And this is what I mean. You go all the way up and now it's right. It, it's just, um, now it's fully wet, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and yeah, we'll just do that. So the first effect we really want to mess with is the chorus. So I'm going to use type three on the chorus. We're going to turn up the level. Turn the speed down like about there. Now we're going to use uh, the delay as well. We want to turn the delay about to half again. So we get 50, 50, 50 wet, 50 dry. We'll turn the speed to around here and then we'll turn the feedback to the middle, somewhere around the middle. It's sounding pretty good, but now let's turn on that awesome reverb, and we want to turn the time pretty far up. Not not so it's like endless, but yeah. And then 50, again, 50, 50, so 64, 65. And as you noticed, I'm on type three. So yeah, like I said, we're giving that reverb a lot to just mess with, with the, the harmonics that we're getting from all the oscillators. Other than oscillator three, you know, triangle wave isn't gonna be harmonically rich, but it really adds to the bottom end, so. And there, I hope you were listening to this with like extended range speakers or headphones where you could really hear the bass frequencies. Um, I'm using uh, the Biodynamic, uh, what, what, what are they? Are they the DT700X Pros or whatever? They're the, the successor to the DT770s. At least I think they are. But they have a lot of bass extension. But yeah, I can hear the rumble. But because we chose a triangle wave for our sub oscillator, I'm gonna I'm saying it in quotes because it's not really a sub, it's a full oscillator on this synth. Then we're just really getting just this nice smooth, um, just nice bottom end to it. All right. So the other thing we want to do is now in the effects section, we're still there. We want to go to the reverb. So go to the reverb. We want to go ahead and turn down the pre-delay all the way to zero. But we want to go ahead and uh, go to the mod section and we want to turn up the mod rate to around 25.
I think that's gorgeous. Um, so it's a hybrid synth. A lot of our um, sections are actually analog on this. So our overdrive is analog, our filter is analog, our pre-filter drive, our VCAs and things like that. We can actually add a little bit of overdrive, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to add about 25 there. We don't want to... We don't want to, like, distort, like I said, we don't want to distort the effects section. It's just this really lovely, just lush sound. Um, let, let's hear that with the 24 dB per octave. It gives you a little bit of a smoother uh, feel to it, but it also bring, uh, takes down your top end. So let's go back to the 12. I think I like it more in the 12 dB per octave in that case. It's just, like I said, it's, it's just very gorgeous. So... We could add a little bit of noise to that. I like to add a little bit. Um, I didn't in my saved patch, as you can see there, but yeah, it's still nice. So we could add a little more to that to make it even more interesting. So one of the interesting features that the Novation Peak has is each uh, oscillator has a, a faux oscillator that sits beneath it that can be used for hard syncing it or oscillator syncing it. And to get to that, you go to the oscillator section, you choose an oscillator, like we're gonna go to oscillator one for instance, and you have this thing called V-Sync. And no, we're not talking like on a graphics card. It, it, it's just, oh, uh, you'll hear it. Let's go up to a higher frequency. So we're going to actually incorporate that. We're going to incorporate it on both of our oscillator one and two, the ones with wavetables. We won't do it with our VA oscillator. But we can obviously use one of the LFOs. We'll use LFO2 since we have face controls to it. It's just easy to get to. You have additional LFOs, but they don't have face values to get to it directly. So we're going to go to the mod envelope. We're going to go ahead and choose direct there but we're going to go ahead and move over. So here, and we want to, actually it doesn't really matter. If we can use the first one or not. So what we want to do is we want to use LFO2. We want to use a uh, bipolar, so plus and minus. And we want to go destination, and we want to go to oscillator one V-sync. We want to add a little bit of depth, so here. But we want to bring the speed down of LFO2, so put it on there. Let's see what it sounds like with it just like bonkers crazy. It's a little too much. But yeah, you, you get the point, right? It, it's, it's gorgeous.
turn the speed down even more on. This is our wave uh, scanning or wavetable scanning LFO, and this will be our V-Sync LFO or our hard sync LFO. We'll turn it down even more. Let's go to mod slot two, do the same exact thing. We're gonna go LFO two, we're gonna go plus and minus, so bipolar. We're gonna go ahead and move it to oscillator two V-Sync. We're gonna turn the depth a little higher. Let's turn it to 15. I, I'm kind of just like demonstrating the cool things you can do with this synth or giving you even ideas like if you have software synths uh, out there like maybe a wavetable uh, software synth like how you could just layer things together and just make it sound wonderful so yeah I'm just gonna play a little bit so you can hear what it really sounds like Hope you agree that that's just an absolutely gorgeous sounding patch and it's just it's just like so much you can do with this synth that just sounds absolutely wonderful but yeah um just i i love using the v-sync capability so the uh virtual oscillator sync capability which is really cool because you don't have to just sync it to a specific oscillator things like that. I mean, if you want like kind of an, uh, it's not an oscillator synky sound, but you can do kind of an FM thing. It's not even kind of an FM thing. It, do, it does FM with the mod matrix, but yeah. And then you pair that with an awesome um, triangle oscillator on the three, on oscillator three, and you bring it down an octave to make it a, a sub oscillator sound. It's just, it's just absolutely gorgeous. And of course, what you could do as well is on oscillator two, if you really wanted to, you could change it to um, coarse tuning of seven, so semi, a seven semitone, so you get a you, you get a um, fifth on the second oscillator. So let's hear that.
Yeah. So, like I said, absolutely fantastic sounding patch, at least, yeah, I'm being biased because it's my own patch. Of course, I think my patches sound awesome, but yeah, I hope it gave us uh, somebody some inspiration to what you could do with the Peak. Um, I picked the Peak, obviously, because I asked uh, my community what, which synth you want to hear next. So the Peak actually won quite a bit over the Take 5 or the Trigon which kind of surprises me. I would I would assume that the Take 5 would just do better. I don't understand why the Take 5 isn't doing as well as it is. But yeah, that said, I think the the uh, TO5, whenever that launches, I, which I do have pre-ordered, um, yeah, it, it's, it's going to do well from the amount of pre-orders, I guess, that are out there on it. I hope I'm in the, uh, like in the early pre-order batch so that I can make a video as soon as possible on that. Yeah, so, oof, it's just such a good sounding synth, the Peak. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do for my next video. I'm going to have an analog synth in my next video. I did finally get a good working OB6, and you'll be seeing more of that in the future as well. And the major reason that I ended up getting another OB6 is because, one, I've never been able to replicate some of the lovely patches on any other synths which i hope the to5 will be the exception maybe that will be the synth that i can replicate it especially the uh, broken ep patch uh, which is uh, uh, patch 6 or 506 depending on how you're looking at it because the 500s and above are factory patches that you can't edit and they're duplicated on the lower patches so like 506 and 6 are the same patch, but patch 6 can be edited. But yeah, it, it's just, or sorry, it's patch 7, isn't it? I keep saying 6, but it's it's patch 7. Uh, so 507 or 7, that one, it's called Broken EP. It just sounds amazing. I've never been able to get that exact sound on another synth, and it's just lovely. Um, hopefully I'll be able to replicate it on the TO5, but I want to do a comparison of the TO5 and the OB6+. plus. Yeah, I just, I love that sound. All right, that said, I'm rambling on that side of things. But yeah, I, I will in, I will try to make another video this weekend on another synth. It'll be analog for sure. I'll definitely make one next week if I don't make it this weekend. And I'll, I'll try to do more videos where I just do sound design. I mean, they're all going to be now sound design videos or potentially like, I don't know if I really am looking forward to any new pedals coming out. I should do some more videos on the the Strymon Big Sky MX. I, some people have asked about that. But yeah, again, I'm rambling. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that gave you some inspiration to make some beautiful ambient pads. Even if you don't have a peak, maybe on another wave table synth, maybe try to replicate it on something like the Blofeld. The effects aren't going to sound nearly as good, so use some external effects. Or if you have some software synths, um, I, I think, I, I don't know of any real software since that I've ever really used, so I can't like recommend one, but there's some good wavetable ones out there, so I've heard. So yeah, try, try doing something like that where you just have some lovely evolving uh, wave scanning pads and things like that. You, you could probably do something very similar on the uh, ASM Hydra synth anyway, uh, as well. Anyway, again, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed already and you like this kind of content, go ahead and subscribe to me. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. All right. See you next time. Bye.